Hello Internet, it is I, the Roshi, and I'm back with another reaction, this time listening to some Genshin Impact music. But not just any music, we are listening to Raiden Shogun's battle theme. Wow! I've speculated a lot about this character, but there's a lot that I don't know. So, I'm gonna listen to it and feel out the vibes. For those of you returning, you already know, but for those who are new here, I'm not well versed in music terminology. However, I can still feel things. <laughs> So I'm going to listen to it in one go, and then I'm going to express how it made me feel, what it makes me think about afterwards. So yeah, I'm excited. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box. You will get up to 20 of exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. And it's amazing because every month there's a different theme. We're heading into February now. So it's time for Valentine's Day. Love is in the air this Valentine's Day. We've packed our favorite treats into the Be My Valentine box to celebrate and show appreciation. Indulge in delicious snacks filled with love. This month's box is filled with all sorts of your favorite treats to celebrate Valentine's Day, such as Strawberry Shortcake Kit Kat, Pokemon Candy Hearts, Pewdie Kata Spicy Ramen, and many more. Now this booklet's very cool, it tells you all about the snacks inside, allergens, all sorts of stuff, but it also shares some cultural things as well. For example, how to say I like you or I love you in Japanese would be ski desu. Just be careful not to say aishiteru, because that is rarely used. I know in anime, you might, if you, if you watch anime, I mean, come on, you guys probably watch anime, and you hear them go aishiteru, that's very, very dramatic. That's something you would say if you were on your deathbed. So yeah, stick to ski desu. So there's a lot to choose from in here. Look at the packaging. It's like, it's, it's like a little pyramid. How'd they do that? Strawberry milk candy? Tart strawberry outer shell with layers of condensed milk inside like a layer cake. Well, all right. I'll try one. It eventually kind of crumbled on its own. That's, that's not bad. It reminds me of like, like a blow pop, but less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> now we have these spicy chili tomato chips that I'm really curious in trying because uh, Japan, when it comes to their spicy things, they usually don't get too intense, but there's there's some warnings on here that it could be hot. So, you know, that's interesting. It's also cool because here it says tomatoes made in Kumamoto Prefecture. And that's their little mascot. Prefectures have their mascots. This is, I think this is theirs. Kuma means bear. It's a little bear. It makes sense. All right, let's try a chip. I'll take a potato chip and eat it. It has a nice tomato taste, and there is a little bit of a kick. There's a little bit of a spice, and it's one of those spices that it kind of lingers. It's not too strong, but the more you have, it builds. If you ever wanted to try one chip, it wouldn't kill you. But if you ate the whole bag in one sitting, yeah, you might need something to drink. Speaking of which, if you were to get the Sakurako box, you would receive some delicious tea and a lovely tableware item. So as you can see, the Tokyo Treat box comes with a variety of snacks that aren't that easily accessible in countries outside of Japan. So if you're interested, I recommend you give it a shot. Click the link in the description or comment section down below and use code ROSHI, R O S. C-H-I for $5 off of your first purchase. Thank you to Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. And now, on to the reaction. Almost feels like a heartbeat. and you have that traditional Japanese influence coming in. I'll try not to talk through all of it, but I am gonna comment on some things here and there. I'll recap at the end, summarize.
Oh. I'm gonna take notes during this. They have this like ta ta in the background every once in a while, and it almost sounds like it could be like thunder in the distance. And the quick plucking of strings like rain. And then it gets more warped and distorted and like stretched as it continues. Like something's corrupted or power cannot be contained. And then there's also that warm, warm, like energy. I mean, it's a boss theme, so... But there's almost, like, horror, like, undertones to it. Distorted again. Oh man, and that sudden cut. Oh, we're in phase two now. Okay. What? Got wind instruments now. I love it when they combine this, like, when they combine the old and new age together. Ooh!
Oh, it's about to drop. Oh! Jeez. That got my hair sticking up on my arms. Um, <laughs> okay. Hoyoverse is very kind for adding a game onto uh, all this music. It's about the music, guys. I love the Japanese influence with, with all those traditional instruments. And these two phases really felt connected. I said this before. I love how they mix this this new age sound with this older classical stuff where you have these distorted effects this glitchiness to it this the stretching the screeching here and there i feel like that can represent something forcing its way out or something taking control or possibly control being lost to something it's hard to explain, but I feel like there's something very like outward and inward at the same time with this. Raiden Shogun's boss music is a storm. You have the instruments sounding like the wind, sounding like the rain, sounding like the thunder. And then there's this distortion because there's stress, there's panic, there's chaos. Raiden Shogun is supposed to be seen as this imposing figure. She is an Archon, she's a god, she rules over Inazuma. This music does a very good job showing that this character is a force of nature, a very powerful being. Maybe not 100% in control, maybe a little on the edge, but regardless, it's not someone who you just willingly want to mess with. But yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't know the specifics and that's okay. Please don't spoil anything in the comment section. I would appreciate it because I will experience it for myself when I get to that point in the story. One thing I mentioned that I heard in the first phase is that they had this boom, 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 boom. It sounded like a heartbeat. And then you had the lighter uh, strings up front, right? And it was interesting because you kept hearing that boom, 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 boom throughout the entirety of it. But once those strings started to get more distorted that bump bump kind of disappears and then it returns when the strings return to normal that makes me think that there is an entity someone out here seeing something the face you know you interact with this thing but then there's something beyond it back here laying in wait just watching bump 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 and then when this influence starts coming to the front then you have that distortion and the the lines kind of get mixed a little bit. In the second phase, there were also parts that sounded like there was like the, the movement or whirring of some machines. And that just got me thinking of Raiden Jogun wanting everything to work a certain way. There's the saying, a well-oiled machine. I, I, I don't know. I just get the feeling of that. Things are supposed to work as they should, and I will make sure that they do so. Don't tell me otherwise. You know, that's kind of the feeling I got from this, especially in the second phase. First phase seemed like there was a little bit of trying to balance oneself, symbolism of a storm coming, and then something peeking out to the forefront to eventually turning into a more EDM of a storm, where there's this symbolism of power and control. And it just makes sense because, you know, electro, electricity, just energy, power in general. This allows us to do so many things. We are capable of so much because of this thing. However, at the same time, it's so dangerous. And from what I can tell, this just fits right in very well. 
And I will say this, after listening to the Scaramouche boss theme and hearing some of the Japanese influence in that, I don't know if it's taking any exact moments from this song and putting them into that, but it ties together very nicely, especially when you have a better idea of Scaramouche's origin being from Inazuma, being associated with Raiden in the way that he is, and just how that all connects. It's very, very cool. I highly recommend you go check out this video if you haven't seen it already. It's an amazing song, and I think you'd really enjoy my reaction and breakdown of it. But yeah, that's it from me. If you'd like to help this small channel get bigger, then by all means, please subscribe to the channel, like, comment, check out the description for additional ways to support me, share the video, all that good stuff. Every little bit counts. Thank you so much. It means a lot. And until next time, shine on you crazy diamonds. Later.